G'day, welcome back to Project Brewpeg, the story of a sunken fishing trawler converting to a global expedition and research boat. This week we're getting stuck back into our stabiliser wings. We're building the actual foil sections so that we can start getting them ready to mount on the hull. A couple of weeks ago the guys started building the stabilisers, put the doublers on, cut the side of the boat out and started building the gull wings to put on the side. Just a reminder, we're not using side stabilizers, moving stabilizers or paravanes. We're actually using what are called a gull wing stabilizers. They drop down using hydraulics when in use and they sit up against the hull when not. And this is the design, if you remember, that Dan came up with. So we had Stu up uh, a couple of weeks back and um, this is the last of the footage from when he was here. Basically we we're putting, the, putting together the wings. wings. Trev came over and gave us a hand and it was nice being able to solve some of the design challenges that we faced um, with those two guys with me. They're, they're bloody smart when it comes to engineering and figuring out the challenges that we had to, to solve. It was going to be a case of solve it as we build it. Um, mainly because we didn't necessarily know what challenges we were going to face in the, you know, leading up to it. So it was always a case of see what we come up against and then solve that challenge as we, as we meet it. It was pretty awesome having those two guys with me and um, yeah, it really helped. Once the guys decided on the design, they started by cutting out the first panel. All right, so, so we can start by basically cutting our known length because we know we're going to take some more off. Are you good? Yeah. If I put one, so that's our centre line, if I put one say there, that, that end of the arm is going to be taking the bulk of the load and that end of the arm, is, like it's still going to spread it but it's not going to be perfect. Yeah, and then if you came that same distance, you put a 50mm one there. So the plan is good, like that, yeah. welded in. So that's pretty even, roughly, mm. and then we've mm. got a piece of flat that comes in here like yeah. that. I like that. That's good. I mean, that's pretty spread even. So this is essentially what we're building. We have to create an aerofoil shape. We've got a piece of round pipe at the very front. So that goes about there, somewhere in the wing. Then we've got our two verticals, which go about something like that and that. And then back here, we've got a piece of 50 mil by 50 mil angle iron. And then right at the back, we've got a piece of six by 100 mil flat. So. It's a wee bit sort of heckled and pickledy at the moment, but it'll make sense while we've got it laid out here. And that shape sort of sits a bit like that. Uh, sorry, what was the next one? 427. And this is following the curve? Yeah. The profile that we've got, we've just basically marked out where our various components are going to be. So first strong back, second strong back, the centre centre line of the wing, and then the final strong back, the, the angle iron strong back over here. We're going to have our flat bar that sits horizontal, it sort of sits like that as a trailing edge. And then the pipe is going to be welded in something like that. So we're just going through now and we're going to basically parallel these lines all the way up and start tacking in our 16mm uh, strong back over the back there. Okay. Yeah. We need to tack the strong backs onto here. Yeah. That's warm in the sun. It is, yeah. Um, right, that's it there. Right we now have to basically line these up so that they have the same angle everywhere. So Stu's got his medium adjustment tool and we are medium adjusting it. Uh, do you want to take some measurements across the tops and the bottoms or something? And yeah, it's got to be parallel down this end, but what you're doing is beautiful at this end though. Yeah, no, it's, I think if we measure this distance, measure that distance, and maybe tack a spacer on. Yeah, that'll work. Yep. Right. So what the plan is, we've got to get these straight, and we've got to get these square to an imaginary line that goes between that point there. My lovely assistant will uh, now demonstrate. 
So if you imagine that line there is the center of our wing, we need to get these beams square to that. So we have to basically maneuver what we've already welded on. So we're gonna cut the tacks and then rejig it and tack it back up again. Yeah, it needs to come a tiny bit more over. I think trying to get it right on the side. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise it'll just pull. It'll pull anyway, exactly. Yeah. So as far as I can tell it needs to go a tiny bit that way, but that weld will probably pull a little bit anyway. So we can get one weld in Dame and then we'll recheck and weld and recheck and need my glasses. I actually think that looks like a parallel gap. It's hitting the weld there, so it's not touching the metal because it's hitting the base of the weld. But the gap looks very parallel right. and uniform, so I think we're okay. Go the other end, not too bad actually. Going to thread on that one. Needs to go a tiny bit that way, but the weld will probably do that. So. Yeah, better. Looks pretty good to me. Very uniform gap. So we need to pull this one over. I'm hoping this now is now strong enough. Yep. But as you say, with a perfectly square block in there. Clamp it up. We were able to throw a couple of reasonable flux core welds down. So what the plan is now, we've got it to the stage where these are pretty parallel. They're a little bit out at this end, but we can pull them in and then weld them. We're going to flip all of this over and start working on the skin. So we've got the other half of the 6 mil skin there under the welding hat. We're going to flip this over and yeah, mount it all up. is almost ready to fly. It's actually not really far, is it? So, nah, we'll grind that out. Yeah, it's not a lot to take out. Yeah. Fuck, that look cool. It does look cool. They're gonna be awesome. It'll definitely fly, it's light yeah. enough. I think we might need the 600 horsepower version now. First look, this is our wings. So, you can see the bend that we've been trying to go for all day. So that end there is the hinge end and the join. Obviously there's a little gap in there at the moment. But what we need to do is actually file that out. So we'll be taking, we're actually just going to take it out of one side because it's not a big join to deal with so probably taking maybe 20 mil out of one side do a gentle slice and uh, yeah we'll be able to close that up run a bead over that getting close so I'm thinking yeah right thinking if we just do that yeah the redneck bevel very much so I'm wearing the appropriate headwear to do it. Totally. Can I borrow your hat, bro? Nah, bro. You need to get your own E. Get your own out, eh? That's not appropriate. <laughs> Can't just go and pinch another man's head. I'll give you some chips in exchange. I wouldn't give it to you even if you gave me a bucket, bro. You seem kind, but it's very deceptive. <laughs> Totally. I might just do a tack in its corner. Yeah. 
bloody close. It's not too bad, is it? It's real close, eh? I think you're right. Tack a corner. Yeah, I think we can get away with it from that point. those down and we should be good. Yeah, right. Um, what's the gap between the... Oh, not much. There is a gap, but it's only three mil. Oh, it's definitely fillable. We're gonna be double continuous welding it anyway. The gap might actually give you a better join anyway, you know? Yeah, yeah, true. All right. Okay, so uh, so we need to know if it's straight. Yes. So and you need to kind of tack that into the, to the uprights as well. Yeah. I was thinking, like in a way, a, a big, a flat edge. We could put it down there and there. Oh, you know what you got? You've got some. There's a slight bend on the sit there. Yeah. That's it's close enough. Like over the length of that, you're talking maybe a couple of minutes. Yeah, that's fine. I wouldn't lose any sleep over it. No. All right. So what's our plan then? Do we tack? It's not a seven three seven max. <laughs> No, we're probably building it safer. Um, do we, we'll tack it here and here. I was thinking maybe do... Um, here and here or something? Yeah, here and here. I'd, I'd make sure all that's right first. Tack that, then worry about. Well, we know that's going to be right because it's right on the other plane, but I'm just thinking we could still adjust these if we need to. Exactly. Without tacking them, you know? Yeah. We yeah. can tack them there and know it's attached. So we them. almost need to do our ball... Yes. The, you know, here. Yeah. All right, let's do that. Let's get our ball out and measure it. So halfway up. Yep. Pretty, pretty square. That's pretty good. Pretty really square. That one's slightly out, but that's that's all right. It's acceptable. Yep. That's good enough. Yep. So one six five. One eight five. So we need a shirt. Clamp that in. It's quite a big difference, isn't it? Inside to inside, I got one. Yeah, yeah, one. I went outside to outside, same difference. Yeah. Definitely increases. It's gone in maybe a centimetre. Because this one moved that way, that one didn't move in at all. Yeah, so just adjusted it. So. So 23. 23.5. I'll take the inside one. Yep. Just a little bit. 23, 23 and a half. 23. Although you want to make sure whichever one you tack. I'll take this in, taking this inside one that I'm measuring. Is that the inside one or that's the inside Oh, this one, sorry. I'll, I'll tack this. Yeah. Know that it's Because that's solid. against an absolute. Yeah, exactly. And then you could do that relative. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Upside down welding. The best time. <laughs> yep, cool. Right, 165. It's not far off. I think five. We 
cut it the other way around last time, didn't we? But it probably doesn't really matter. But yeah, it won't fall anywhere. It should be no, right. No. Can't fail. Got my mindset on grade. Like I am home, no doubt. Time to raise it too loud. I'm gonna That's a bit closer. Oh yeah, not much now. So when you measure 165, where inside to inside. Inside to inside, yeah. What are you on? Uh, 150. Okay. Yeah, so I'll you make it wider. Just trust me, I'll make it wider. Okay. I see saying so by splaying yeah. it out, yeah, that's what you're saying. Yeah, 159 now. We can pull them apart, 5mm. Yeah. When we weld the other bit on. Okay. I'll just do a couple of holding on tacks. Yep. It was definitely the right call to start the next one. I mean, much further along than that, we would have really yeah. hated. Forgotten what we did. Well, yeah, forgotten what we did and also uh, just what? dreaded doing the next one. Yeah. I feel like we're just about caught up. Like, uh, exactly. We weren't that far ahead, but... Yeah. I think it's because it was starting to look like something. Yeah. Which made you just go, oh, let's make it look like something more. We're going like, to get a know. wing in 10 minutes. Exactly, yeah. Start with that. Yep. Yeah, because you can always grind. Yeah. yeah. Right. Are we dueling grinders? I'll give it a shot. Alright. So, I guess so we let's can some get one edge right down. Take that edge. Yeah, because that's got more leverage. Yeah, it's got the tightest curve. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Yeah, you need to kind of do that. So could we have done something different? Ah, so we, in hindsight... We should have cut them the right way around. Cut the other way, yeah. We had this idea in our head that it didn't matter where. Yeah. So we could have measured from the other end, yeah. and it still would have been the join in the middle. Yeah. yeah. One of the issues we're having is the curve on the left panel is not exactly the same as the one on the right panel. So we're having to clamp them together tight, and we're going to tack it, and then we're going to essentially pull the steel to match. So we, we will be butchering it a bit but it'll make sense and it'll be perfectly even by the time we're finished. That's a massive difference in curve, isn't it? Yeah, oh yeah, heaps. Heaps. Both ends are touching now, like... I don't know what they did on the press, but This is almost perfect here. Yeah, something's not right on their press. Ah, yeah. So this is actually not low yet, so do you no. want to just keep, we shall only bring more heat into this. Yeah. Can you bend down on that, just to test, can you? Hey, right, cool, we got pressure on there. Oh yeah, easy. Oh, that'll be oh. right, yeah. Okay. Right, okay. and a big hole. 
as much as we can. Oh, lovely. The power of us. <laughs> So we'll get one more and we could probably start letting it up. Right, we just clamp it up. Clamp it there. How many how many mil is this? Six mil. Six is it? Yeah. Wow. We bend our hole like this when we weld hole plates in. Yeah. We just crowbar it up and down. Yeah, oh yeah, with you put some, weld some dogs on or whatever yeah. and yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really stiff and solid, but it's surprisingly malleable when you need it to be. Oh, but as soon as you have like, connect with another mesh and put a rib in, do this, yeah. and it just goes through the roof. Oh. Yeah. And that's the beauty with steel boats is that yeah. they're, they're all one piece when they're welded together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the eggshell comes together. Yeah. moment out to out is 197 yep. for 198 and the top's 194 so it's going to get out that way like that slightly yeah yeah that's closer to straight can you just give it a quick squirt I'll try so one one six six, that's good. One six four with two millimeters out over that thing. Right, probably acceptable. That looks so quite close. One forty five with twenty mil. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon once you're on HM, we can always jack or clamp. Yeah, that's good. Once again, we did a mill. Throw some welds on it. It's gonna be good enough, isn't it? Do you want to have a go? Oh, yeah. This is Stu's first MIG weld, so that's running flux core with argon and oxygen. It doesn't take much to lose a day, that is it? No. I can't believe anybody goes, oh, does it take so long ago? You've yeah. never done I'll it. Oh, piss off. You've <laughs> never done it if you think things can't go wrong like yeah. this. Yeah. Like that, like that, no, like that. No, yeah. <laughs> uh, just anywhere, like so. You need to get the pipe onto it, don't you? Yeah, and then the pipe dangles out in front of it. Grind a smidge off the center. Yeah, we do, like. need, do need to do that. Yeah, I'll just give that a quick one. Are you so happy? <laughs> what? I'm good now. Oh, that's the correct timber for welding. It's, Is it? Um, it yes. Yeah, what pony wood? Uh, it's hardwood LSI. Um, yeah. It's the low low something hardwood. Low for, stick for welding. Yeah, low stick. That's low, like yeah. low sticky igneous or. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, 
thought it went Down the other. front here too? Oh yeah, that, that's one off the top. Once we've got the trailing edge on, we can figure out the skin and that'll allow us to figure out the angle line. Yeah, right, where it goes, yeah. So what we've got to do now, now that we've got the leading edge on, which is this round bar, we're doing the trailing edge, which is as thin as we can reasonably make it. And in this case, it's six millimeter um, flat bar. But we're not clamping it, we just, because it has to tilt, is that what you're saying? Yes, yes. So it has to be right angled with this? Yes. We could actually wedge something under and yes, clamp, perfect. couldn't we? Lovely. And then when you want to use that on. So what, what the plan is basically is we need to get the trailing edge sorted. So um, it needs to sit parallel, or sorry, at right angle, sorry, to, to that 16mm beam there next to the gloves. So it sits off the steel slightly. And what this allows is it allows us to um, weld the 4mm skin that goes on the bottom to a, a large flat surface so we can get a nice big hot weld on it. It also allows us to fair in the actual back weld so the whole thing's gonna be feared once we finish so it's a real smooth uh, wing profile. But this is a fairly easy step. We just need to weld in a flat bar on the back of the wing. Hey, so do we have another piece of that 75? Yep, the 60. Yeah, another piece of the 60. Do you have any more of that 68? <laughs> Tell when you're ready. Go. That'll lift. Uh, no, take it back a little bit, Sue. Uh, back, yeah, the back, twist or? Yeah, back to your left again. Yeah. Woo, stop, go back, woo, little, yeah, go. Uh, well, yeah. It's only a small weld, no, so. That's good. No. It's within, it's within 20 degrees. Within 45 degrees. <laughs> We're definitely within 360 degrees, nothing to worry about. It's better than the rest of the job. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than everything happened before you got here. It's not, that square's not against the middle. Yeah, there we go. We're pretty good actually. Yeah, hit it now. Yep. <laughs> I reckon next one we do the cut right at the beginning and that way we can measure this distance yeah, right. right at the start. Yeah, you're right. yeah. Clamp it like clamp the wood yeah. there and there. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's just actually then it's just that. Yeah. So now we need to figure out where our piece of skin is gonna go. So So this is gonna have a slight curve too obviously. Very slight. Yeah. Is it still 11.60 or has it changed overnight? No, it's changed since we weren't watching. It's now 11.70 to there. Yeah, right, 11.60. Yeah, 11.70. Mm, yeah, 11.60-ish. Yeah, 11.60, down at the bottom. Oh. No, 11.60 at the top. 11.70 at the top. Yeah, right. So, 11.70. It should be the same, because it actually is a straight line in that dimension. Yeah, 11.70, 11.70. And then that theoretically Which should be. Which one did you cut last time? This one? This one, yeah. yeah. Well, it's definitely 1170 if you just move the tape down a bit.
Oh, it's a good milestone though. Yeah. It's almost your first wing, you yeah. know, when you look at it. It's actually nice looking at the end when you see the first. I was going to say, you see the progress. See you tomorrow. Probably. What time are you leaving? Oh, uh, we'll probably go, we'll probably get up, have Brecky do a couple of hours on the boat and then hit the road after that. Oh yeah, right. So at five. Yeah, well we'll be up about three. Yeah. Once I've done my whole routine of push-ups and everything, then yeah. I'll, I'll get out here. Just have a half a grapefruit and some black coffee. <laughs> and a raw egg. <laughs> See you, Trevor. Well, what legs you don't film those, I only just think. <laughs> Look who showed up from NZ. Reverse panther. You might have to just um, do attack. It's only just from like the there to the No worries, guys. See you, see you Come around for coffee after yeah, you finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, never finish this one, <laughs> <laughs> See you later. See you, mate. See you, guys. Now that we've got our main longitudinal structures in, so we've got our leading edge, our two main beams, our angle iron, and our flat bar. And this allows us to basically, the flat bar allows us to adjust where the, the bottom skin gets welded on, it's not critical. We can set it so that it's perfect on the front, and then just uh, slot weld it to each of these verticals. That's why we've got great big wide vertical at the back here, because it's easy to get to. And then, yeah, we can adjust where it's going to mount onto that large um, flat piece on the trailing edge. Back. Does Back it? A bit. Back yeah. See you later. See you, See you guys. See you, Trev. So the work's really intensifying on Brew Pig over the last um, few weeks, and we're getting closer as to our dump and run um, target. So uh, last week you saw us get the Morse cables and the prop spinning. This week we're back onto our stabilizers, and it's not going to be long until we're putting this boat in the water. So. Um, yeah, there'll be a lot of progress over the next few episodes, so expect um, expect our episodes to be a little bit chop and changey as we get these last jobs crossed off the list. So in terms of wing structure, we figured out what we're basically doing with the internals of these wings. Um, it's pretty straightforward now, we just need to go through and build the second wing. Um, Trev and I also went and spent a bit of time figuring out the hydraulics, so we're going to be using hydraulic rams to lift these wings up and down. Um, we've modified our Kubota generator into a Kubota power pack, hydraulic power pack. Um, we'll show you a bit of that. And we're also um, yeah, looking at building some excavator style arms. That'll make a lot more sense next week. Um, but yeah, basically we're, we're really pushing on with some progress and solving some of the design challenges that had us a bit stuck. You got ice like summer sky If it's my good kill I die And now it starts to rain So let's enjoy it 